presentation to uh, President Taylor, and it was such a moving thing. I was wondering if you reflected on that yesterday, and uh, it was such an important time. I reflected um, when we started the mass action on April 3rd. Um, coincidentally, on that day, one of the women who really believed in me died on that same day. And it was a tough day. We were in Australia, Sydney, and I did a whole long thing remembering 10 years when we started with nothing but our conviction and 10 US dollars. We are in the process of planning some events towards the end of the year. The government is in the process of planning 10 years of peace, but we are planning separately 10 years of, and it definitely will have to happen towards the end of this year, which is like in December when we officially ended the mass action campaign. So 10 years, but I, it never crossed my mind that um, last year, this, I mean, 10 years ago, like yesterday, was when we met with President Taylor. And there are many things that we've gone through in my life, in my work, that sometimes just slip past me, not because I don't appreciate where God has taken me from, but because there's just so many challenges ahead that you don't want to spend time thinking about the past. There's so much ahead that you have to do. My colleagues did an interview for the Korean Broadcasting Network, and they were talking about the Korean, they, they had just done a translation of my book into Korean, and so the, the TV crew from Korea went to Liberia. I was not around, and when I saw some of the interview, I was like, I forgot that I actually did that. <laughs> In the earlier years of my work, I worked with ex-combatants, and one of my friends, they were asking her, how brave is Lema? And she's like, that woman is fearless. I don't think about those things. And they said, can you give an example? And she, then she told the story of one of the days we went to work with the combatants and a fight broke out. And someone pulled a knife and stabbed his friend in his eyes. And everyone was running away and I was grabbing for the guy with the knife and trying to stop the blood. She said, how can one person? So after I saw that interview, I said, Faba, did I really do that? <laughs> she said, you know what? That was the day I promised myself I was never following you anywhere <laughs> because you were just too horrible for my, my But again, in the moments of doing some of the things that we did, I just went for it. My mother has a perfect description for me. She never tests the foot with her water, with test her foot in the water, she dies in head first. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, there are many things that people will come and remind me of. There is one where they told me we actually was walking towards the commanders and the rebel general was coming and the, the, the guys with the AK-47 were shouting, out of the way, the general is coming. And I kept saying to the women, follow me. Out of the way, the general is coming, follow me. And then we got face to face with the general and then they say, and he, I said, get the hell out of my way. And he stepped aside and we walked straight past him. And then some of the women said he was whispering to his bodyguards, who's that woman? You know? But again, some days it was, all really very fuzzy. I, I was in conversation with the mayor of Chicago three weeks ago, and I asked him, Mayor Emanuel, what do you think Hitler and Dr. King had in common? And he said, nothing, except common humanity. He said, wrong. Anger. <laughs> Dr. King was an angry man. Hitler was an angry man. The one thing that distinguished King from Hitler, Mandela from Hitler, Tutu from Charles Taylor, and you can go on naming heroes and valiants, is the expression of their anger. Mm -hmm. So most times when I'm working with young people, I tell them anger is fluid like water, and you have an option to pour yours into a violent container 
or to pour it into a non-violent container. And depending on where you decide to pour your anger, that's how the world will remember you, either as a villain or as a hero. You know, so most times when we did the work that we did, it was that surge of anger that just propelled me forward. And some days I forget, I forget what we've done, and sometimes we go into communities, and some of the ex-combatants will run after us. Jay is their target most of the time. Once they came to the car, and he's really upset because when we go to the supermarket, it's not just to buy food. I probably have to spend 30, 45 minutes interacting with them in the street or giving money and listening to them talk about a new baby or something. And so this day, I think he was just fed up. And then one of them said to me, you know what, we realize your husband really doesn't like us, but he needs to understand that we can take you from him anytime. <laughs> I said, yes, I will make sure I tell him that you all can cause us to separate anytime you want that to happen. But yeah, some, most times I, 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 I forget things. But sometimes the women don't allow us to forget. So end of this year, we're really planning a huge celebration. In May, I'll be back home and I'm going to Bourne County where I'm from. The women intend to do a grand celebration of their 10th anniversary. So we're going to do that.